So it's a beautiful Saturday here on this job that is really getting a lot further along. I'd say I probably have to bring this grade probably 20 more feet into this bank. But first I'm going to have to sort out this stump dump, sift through it. There's concrete demo, there's wood that hasn't decomposed, and then there's some really good soil. So, uh, no good deed goes unpunished. I blew a hose yesterday, which is not a big deal. Not a big deal at all, actually. Honestly, I could have just trimmed the hose shorter and put one fitting on. Because I had these hoses routed a little too long, something had snagged and started to bend these fittings. So I put a fitting on, a, a 90 fitting, and I put a wrench under it and I pried it up, started to straighten that out. I went to do the other one and it broke. So I got to take the cylinder off, bring it home, lob these silly connections off and put better ones on, and then weld it back up. Hope for the best in terms of uh, not having it leak. What are you going to do? Could be worse. Beautiful day. I got that fire going good. The Lord is with me, so no complaints here. You can see a little better that that had broken down on the bottom. I had to cut them ports off and weld on some fittings. So that's what I've done, and I've offset them and canted them upwards and done everything I can to tuck them up tight here against the blade because before they used to they used to loop out up here and they would actually touch the radiator a little bit I gotta get home and uh, tomorrow I'll crimp this stuff and come back with it Well, it's a pretty morning to get back after it here. Made up some new hoses. Let's see if we can get this junk running. It's looking pretty good to me. It's all tucked up in there. Fairly well protected. If I could get the camera to focus. Now we can go see how bad my booger welds leak. Got it. Finally got it back together, ready to go. To some extent. I mean, I did break the tree spear on one of the previous videos. Detached right there. That's why I got this chain looped up and over. Because the chin strap part here, the, the rake, which was built individually, independent of the spear. The rake and the spear portions separated. Pretty much, uh, maybe like one, little, one or two little strands were left of it. For those of you wondering what that is, that's a log choker, 10 foot choker stuck through a little stub of pipe if you can see it a little stub of pipe welded on and a five dollar vice grip yes it's stupid but i have pulled 60 foot single stems with a five dollar vice grip and a stub of tube actually i've pulled a few at a time so that's one way you can make do without a, a winch because i've been logging without a winch the entire time that i've been logging There's a lot of chaos goes on in there that I can't see. So having them hoses tucked up real tight seemed to me like a good idea. And um, then when I jumped in to, to leak test it, my welds were fine, no leaks, but uh, the, the blade angled the wrong way. So I tried to uh, see if I could swap some things around up there, but there was no chance, no chance at all. And so I just swapped those two fittings, which those are the feed feed fittings into that um, selector valve, DC selector valve. So the only thing now is that the grapple is going to open and close backwards. But honestly, I'm not even accustomed to which way it opens and closes. It doesn't matter to me. The blade has to go, you know, if you move the stick to the right, the right hand corner needs to dive down. That's a six way. When you're trying to cut a grade by the fly, by the seat of your pants, it needs to happen fast. And that's another reason that I went up on hose size and I went up on the port size so that that angle cylinder could respond faster, even at a lower RPM. Well, there's a lot of good news today. The machine did not catch on fire. All good things. Looking at the positives here, optimistic. Got all the hoses rerouted, and I was previously having an issue where I thought the push button momentary switch had failed. 
So I was just wiring it by hand for a minute to open the grapple and untwist the wires and twist them up and close it, untwist them, you know. Well, so today I took my pocket knife and I cut off the electrical tape that's got this little micro switch taped to the stick, to the four-way stick. And I'm troubleshooting it with a test light and a meter and it's not behaving the way I expect. So I look underneath the batteries and I say, oh, you know what? It looks like I rewired that wrong the last time I had the batteries out. So I swapped the wiring around, got out the light, it starts working correctly. I start the machine, try it, and it's working. And I'm saying, hey, great, I've got my, my uh, hydraulic tilt is fixed. And now I've got my electric control to open and close the spear. I said, oh, that's great. And then the second time I went to use it, it, it behaved funny, and I look down and I see solder boiling right there. And I look and there's smoke coming up from out in here. I says, uh-oh, we're going we're gonna to have a fire, we're going to have a fire. So I jump up, I pop open my battery cover, and I see the wire and I just grab it and I yank as hard as I can. Because I, I know any second this thing's going to gonna catch because it didn't have a fuse on it. I know, you don't have to tell me, I know it's supposed to have a fuse. I was an avionics tech in the Marine Corps. Trust me, I freaking know. It's a case of me being lazy, be, uh, behind schedule, overwhelmed, overbooked, overworked, underlaid, all these things. So I grabbed that wire and I yanked that thing. And baby, let me tell you, that freaking burnt right into my fingers, right across my pinky and my index finger. The, wor the worst is across that index. Man, it does not feel good. It feels like my finger got cut off. So I'm crying about nothing here compared to having lost my machine, you know. In a week, I'll forget all about this. If the machine burned, I'd be remembering it for the rest of my life because this thing has changed my life. So, next time, kids, put a fuse. Hope you learned something. All right, for those of you that have never been equipment owners, sitting at a desk somewhere in a cubicle, whatever, you're going to make a big change in your life. Maybe you're researching. Maybe you've come across my silly channel because you're researching what equipment is good for what nothing breaks up a mess like this of you know a stump dump where there's 14 inch diameter 20 foot long logs all twisted up and it's all been just melted down into a pile of dirt nothing breaks that up like a dozer okay a big excavator yeah it, it could break that up with the thumb especially but it doesn't move it the excavator just swings piles over a dozer comes in nine ten foot swaths and just and, and blows it down you know three minutes to do what takes quite a bit longer with any other machine now a skid steer with a grapple with a with a root rate grapple nothing is more nimble than that for raking through and sifting out the big trash and transporting it picking it up and hauling ass with it a mini x could rake through this but all it does is swing place swing place swing place so it'll it'll sort from a big pile into other piles. But if you had to move stumps across this place with a mini X, how are you gonna do it? How are you gonna do it? You're gonna roll them one push at a time? That would be way faster. It's hard to beat a mini or mid-size excavator and a good size track skid steer. It's hard to beat. The only downside to track skid steer is that the undercarriage costs about as much as a dozer and there's no way on God's green earth that any rubber track is gonna push like a steel track with grouser bars. Them things, the horsepower, there's more horsepower in that machine than there is in that one. And that thing weighs maybe 9,500, maybe maybe 10, 10, 5 with that grapple because the grapple weighs a ton. That machine right now is probably around 16, 17,000. But it's got less horsepower and yeah, it's slow, but it will push three of what that skid steer will push. That's 100 grand. I got that for 10 grand. So you can do the math on how long it'll take you to, to make the payment and, uh, and do the same job. Food for thought.